Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. It's me. It's Alex. And we're live from New York and the Ramble. Now, there's a guy we haven't seen for a while. Uh, yeah. Yep, that would be me. Yep. How you doing, buddy? And and uh, you probably wonder why, because we like Chuck Farnham and we love having him on the show, and uh, we uh, we of course couldn't have him on the show. Excuse me, my nose is dripping. <laughs> I have like an old man. I carry a tissue everywhere now. I know. Keep it in your bra. Yeah, keep it in my bra. Anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, we usually have him on, and he hasn't been on for, I don't know, uh, three weeks, three four weeks, weeks, four weeks, something like that. And there's a reason for that. And, Chuck, would you like to tell him why you haven't been on? What is your excuse? Uh, it, it, it goes back to that trip to Vegas, and I, I was not feeling well, and, and we I went know. to the hospital, and they yeah. kept me for a few days and tested the crap out of me, did nothing. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, I, and I everything went away, and I was fine. And a few uh, weeks ago, I had the pain again. And I thought, well, I'm going to go to the clinic. About halfway to the clinic, I decided to reroute myself to the hospital. And the hospital ran a bunch of tests, and they went, man, you, we can't fix whatever it is here. We think you have an ulcer. So they throw me in an ambulance, drive me 65 miles to Reno to another hospital. Was the siren on? Was, in, the, uh, wait, was the siren uh, on? No. And that's where I, I'm, I screwed up. That's what happened with us. I, I went to this ambulance and Marjorie used the ambulance and no siren. And I'm going, oh, no my siren. money's worth. Come on. I got 50 miles, no siren. Right. So I get there and I'm I'm laying in ER, I guess, or wherever they put me. So far, and this I, story go, is hilarious. By the way, go ahead. Huh? So far, this story is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and then I I'm laying there, I'm laying there, I'm laying there, and the guy goes, I go, do you know what's wrong? They told me I had an ulcer, and he goes, No, you have a gallbladder issue. We we see the gall symptoms, and I'm like, Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> what do we do? And he goes. Well, you're on a blood thinner, so we're going to send you upstairs, and you're going to lay there for two days on morphine, and then we can remove it. So now, you know, $65,000 worth of blood tests. I sit in the hospital. I'm laying there, ordering DoorDash, and they come in, and they take me into the, to the surgery on a Sunday. Nobody's in the hospital on a Sunday for surgery. They don't schedule them. So I get up there, and the guy goes, you know what we're doing to you? And I went, my gallbladder. And he goes, no, we got this new Da Vinci robot that has eight arms, and we're going to take it out. And I'm like, do you, you know, I was scared to death. I'm like, how new is this? I'm li I, this is Reno, and so he goes, no, no, no. I I did five of these this week, and I'm like, to to pets? I mean, what are you talking here, dude? And he goes, no, no, no. I can do this. This is really good. It creates a 3D model of the inside of your body, and the robot then with cameras and GPS or whatever the hell goes in, takes the gallbladder out. And then when the little arms extract themselves from your body, it squirts crazy glue into the holes and seals everything up. Pretty cool. Uh, several million dollar piece of equipment. 60 grand to clean it after they do it. And now hey, wait, wait, it like, costs them 60 grand to clean it? Yeah. 
I hate to see your bill. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for that one. But I have these like I don't you can't even I don't know if you can see them here, but uh, maybe I can tip it in here. You see them little holes? Yeah, that's all it was. That's all it was. There no band aids, no nothing. And so they then they let me go a couple of days later, and I said I thought this was like in and out surgery, no big deal anymore. And he goes, No, yeah, your age is a big deal. Everything at like, our age is a big deal. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, okay, fine. When am I going to recover? And, he, and then I get a phone call from a doctor a couple of days later, and he goes, I'd look at six months before you feel normal again, like I ever felt normal. But that's where I'm at, and I'm eating kind of weird, and you don't poop anymore like you used to poop. You know, used to poop, and it would come out in solid pieces, kind of. But do we have to hear this? Probably. This is the best part. It comes out it, like it kinda, a, a solid piece it's a drainage of drainage now. What? It's kind of like a drainage now. It's not like you have diarrhea, but it's not like you're actually pooping. Kind of in between sludge is, is what that, I've been calling it. it. <laughs> okay, you can all tune out now, folks. Hey, now that you've had breakfast. But I haven't had to change my diet much. I'm just eating a lot less over longer periods of time. Yeah, yeah. So well, anyway. How are you feeling? <laughs> well, first we're going to, I got a couple of questions about this. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. To begin with, the, the robot, I never heard of this thing before. It's called a Da Vinci. And See, it, I mean, I, it, go, I go up to... Mount Sinai, here. That's a, that's a relatively large hospital. A large, well-known, well-equipped hospital. Except when it came time to do my uh, my putting of the seeds in my prostate, they had to send me right. back home because somebody forgot to order one piece. Nice. Right. And it was a little thing that goes on your taint and then oh. guides the needles in. Okay. Ugh. Anyway. And, well, okay. I, I wasn't feeling it. I would, you know, but, but anyway, you were they, they didn't order it. This is a big hospital. They forgot to order one little piece that he needs to do the operation. Do they, do they give you fentanyl when they, um, no, no, they did me. I asked the guy, I said, what kind of, you know, the anesthesiologist comes in and he's crazy. That guy was like, it was like Rodney Dangerfield over my head. And he's cracking jokes and stuff. And he goes, I go, am I getting fentanyl? And he goes, yeah, but not the stuff from Mexico. He goes, I only order from the United States. And I went, okay. He goes, like you would you order drink? fentanyl from Mexico? Uh, apparently, I don't know what's going on. Hey, it's Reno, the hospital. And, but anyway, and with the, point, like, but goes, the point I was trying to make is they didn't have this little part. But it's a big hospital. It's a big major hospital. Right. I mean, they've got every piece of new equipment you would ever think of. I bet if I asked them about the Da Vinci Spider, they never heard of it. I bet. I bet that it's called the Da Vinci XI. And I, if you look it up, there's plenty of stuff on it, and it's it's really cool. It was really really cool. And it has or with a, some guy, you know. Yeah. Has, made, made in a garage. Apparently, it does its job. Really cool. What yeah, else no does? Pay. What the else does it remove? Pay. No. What else does it remove? I I don't know. I'm thinking they use it for other things. I think maybe kidney removal too. Yeah, I would imagine that. Yeah. Appendix. I think they could do appendix with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like he sticks his head in it. And he's got these arms, and because uh, I saw a little video later, and you can kind of see the inside of your guts while it's happening. It's amazing. Probably a billion dollar bill I'll be getting, uh, or uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Medicare will be uh, enjoying that. Well, Medicare will have to take care of eighty percent of it, whatever it is. Right. And then you have what? For the other, uh, Blue Cross. I got the cross. Do you, but is that? But it's a uh, it's a advantage, right? No, no, it's regular insurance. Oh, you pay the three hundred dollars a oh, month. 
like we do. Right. Yeah, but when you walk out, you don't owe anything. They can exactly. send you a bill. You don't owe anything. Right. That's why I didn't go with Advantage. Well, because Advantage was not, it didn't feel comfortable to me. It's so not, it's I, not they, comfortable. Even, and I'm warning anybody out there listening to me, do not get Advantage. It looks yeah. good because they give you, I don't know, they give you a potholder or something with it or something. Right. Get you a know. jacket. But it, what, it, what it is is basically the insurance company replaces Medicare. Yeah. Okay? And they pick up all the costs that Medicare would pick up. But you don't have Medicare anymore. Right. You're, you're being managed. And if you want to go back to Medicare... It's a lot of work. Yeah. So don't lose your Medicare. Pay the $320 a month or whatever. Get this other thing. I mean, we shouldn't have to do any of that, okay? The government should take care of the whole thing, but they don't. Yeah. It's what's called compromise, which I think compromise is a bad word in my vocabulary. Yeah, like people go, you don't want to compromise? Like no, because if I compromise... I have got to take my expectations and lower them. Okay. Yeah. You know. Oh, I wanted this, but no, I can't have it. Because four guys got pissed off in a vote. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. As a matter of fact, when I went down and started looking at Advantage plans, even the Advantage guy goes, no, no, man, you don't want, you, no, no, keep what you got. You got a really good thing going. And it's worked out. I mean, I, I I get really strange bills that aren't really bills, but man, you see some of the charges for some of those pills and stuff. It's like yeah, insane. but it, it's all that is sent to Medicare, and then Medicare for, for the other twenty percent sends it over to Blue Cross, and they take care of all of it. So you don't have to right. worry. You're uh, you're home free. Yeah. Plus, you made yeah, friends with a spider. Okay. You know, me and the spider took care of everything, and. The doc says I'm doing okay, so. Yeah. But you were in the hospital a total of how much? Ease, seven days. Seven days, wow. Because I was on the blood thinner, and they can't do anything when you're on Xarelto. Yeah. So they had to wait <laughs> They had to wait for the blood thinner to thin or whatever. Exactly. They had to wait. It takes 48 hours for it to leave my system, so 49 hours they were sticking me in the spider. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll send you the video. Now, you said nice. you ordered out. Here's interesting. You said you ordered out to Jordash. 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 Yeah. What is it called? Jordash. Jordash. Why? Yeah. Is the food that bad in the hospital? Well, you know, they're feeding you a liquid diet because the gallbladder is still inside you. And trying to fix things. Well, wait a minute, but you then right. ordered from DoorDash? Right. Which worked around the, the fact so. that you needed certain, not have certain things, right? Yeah, well, I'm not ordering a steak through DoorDash. I was ordering, you know, like Jamba Juice and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Something, uh, something did liquid the hospital, did the hospital that was mind? not. The hospital mind? Uh, no, no, they. they I said, have never been questioned about my DoorDash at a hospital yet. Oh, I mean, really? last time I was in the hospital, the guy next to me was smoking weed. Really? Okay. Smoking weed in the hospital. He goes, "Hey, you want some?" I'm like, "You can't do that here." He goes, "I thought it was just cigarettes. Marijuana's legal." I go, "Dude, you cannot smoke anything in the hospital." Well, did he have a vape? No, oh no, no. Oh, because a joint. vape you can get away with because a vape doesn't, you know. Right. Well, some hotels now have have uh, vape sensors in the rooms. They have vape That's sensors. Wrong. Yeah, you. They can tell that air or, uh, smoke mixture or something. They become real Nazis, haven't they? Yeah, you're paying for the damn room. I mean, how many times have you checked in a room back in the eighties? Where it smelled like smoke. The, 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 most of the rooms smelled like smoke for a long time. Hell, your Not doctor anymore. came in smoking. Yeah. 
So they have that guy checked himself out, which apparently is a common thing to do at the hospital these days. I mean, well, I don't know. Here's some things you don't see that often: ashtrays. Well, no, no, and I have a large collection of ashtrays. Do you really? When I was a kid, like 14, we were in Vegas with my cousins. And at night we would, when you could do it, walk between all the casinos. Mm -hmm. And we would steal the ashtrays because they had the logos of the casinos on them. Mm -hmm. So I got like, I probably have 100 casino ashtrays here from when we were doing that. Oh, when you die, will you will them to me? Sure, sure. Okay, good. I'll send, I'll send you out some now. So you have them for the holidays. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Mar Marjorie keeps bugging me. Well, we have to go work on our will. We have a will. We have, Marjorie yeah. sent a way to like uh, an online will service. Sure, right. Mary's wills of. Well, I, it, it probably would hold. I mean, yeah, everything I have goes to Marjorie. Everything Marjorie has right. comes to me, and that's it. But we haven't. We got to name a new. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Who's uh, the person? Uh, executor. Executor. And uh, we need to. We want to uh, change a few things, like who all our money goes to if we die. Because when we wrote this other one up, we didn't have much money, right? We just had right you know, my savings and her savings, and it probably would have taken care of us for the rest of our lives but not in the extravagant style in which we're currently living. Living, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, so consequently, uh, we needed to, you know. Fix that. Fix that. So we got to fix that because now we got a lot of money and it's got to go somewhere if we die. So right. uh, we want, we decided, here, here, tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I'm, nobody's told me I'm wrong yet. I asked a pediatrician I know. I said, have you ever heard anything bad about St. Jude's Hospital? Okay. Yeah, no. No. Not at all, no. ever. I, and and I, I've asked several other people, have you heard anything bad about them? And I look them on, up online, and no. No. In fact, 92% of all their money goes to... That they get right. goes directly towards the hospital, uh, and I'm wondering if that other eight percent includes salaries for doctors. You sure. know, so I sense. mean, it, it seems reasonable to me. And then right. uh, this, uh, this, trust this, Danny Thomas. this uh, pediatrician also suggested you, you might look into the Shriners. Right, because the Shriners have a hospital. She said in Sacramento, it basically serves they, well, California. They have a big one in San Francisco on yeah. 19. Oh, do they have a Shriners hospital? Yeah, it's huge. It's like a multiple blocks on 19th Avenue. Is that Shriners for kids, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. okay. Well, she it's said the that they, kid hospital. That they, whereas uh, St. Jude's deals with like diseases. Okay. Right. Uh, Shriners deals with like you know bad uh, legs um, and yeah they feel like prosthetic the prosthetics and so on yeah yeah so yeah. we might split up the money between the two of them you know that makes sense not that they're going to build another wing because of the money we're giving yeah them. you'll get the little Alex wing you know there. that'll be nice and 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 it's not going to have my name like Danny Thomas on the front of the building well, that would be nice yeah big at the top there. I, I just it just amazes me that I'm going to give my money to a guy I used to watch on TV. Yeah, yeah. And his uh, son-in-law, and his son-in-law who passed away here recently as well. Oh, did he? Really? He a, we went uh, there. We, we, we actually went to St. Jude's Hospital. Shecky and I when we were traveling across the country because we wanted to go to the Danny Thomas Museum. They have the museum there. Really? Yeah, and we went to the Danny Thomas Museum in search of a coffee table, glass coffee table, but we couldn't nice. we couldn't find it. So we were going to ask the person there, can you tell us where the glass coffee table is? I had a friend, Karen Babbitt, 
whose father, by the way, worked for Disney and created the witch in uh, in Snow White. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, uh, Art, Art Babbitt. He went to strike against Disney and then had to kind of leave Disney after a while. Nice. But anyway, uh, uh, Karen got a job working on the last of Danny Thomas's TV shows. I think he played a doctor or something. Uh -huh. and, as she was hired on as a writer. And she was asked to go to uh, Danny Thomas's office to meet with him. And she sits down on the couch. He's not there yet. And right in front of her is a glass coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we're not going to go into what the legend of Danny Thomas was. The legend was. of the glass coffee table? Yeah, well, the, the, the Danny Thomas liked to hire, shall we say, women of the night. In this yeah. case, it might have been women of the day uh, to come and um, relieve themselves uh, on the, the top of the coffee table while he <laughs> laid under it. Yeah. I know, I know. Now, this rumor has been going on forever. So I don't know, is it is it the truth or not? That's the question. Uh, good story. Huh? It's a great story. It's a good story. Yeah. I did a uh, thing one time in the city. It was raining really bad. And we were going to hire a, a hooker to, well, she thought we were going to have sex with her in a car in the rain. The reality is I just wanted her to uh, masturbate in the car while we circled the car with a video camera. I thought that would be interesting in the rain. And it, it all went really well. She weighed about uh, 325, 350. Mm -hmm. But when we left, after we you know got paid her or whatever, we're driving home and we couldn't figure out what the smell was. <laughs> and it was... Apparently, she hadn't bathed in a month or so. So we borrowed the car from somebody's mom. Oh. <laughs> we're driving. Yeah, we're driving. Go, but all we can smell is, you know, it's like old socks in the car. <laughs> so, so we had to drive home with the windows down and, and leave them cracked at her house so she wouldn't smell it in the morning when she went to work. Oh, but, wow. So, yeah, I can relate to Danny's problem. Yeah. Well, anyway, the Danny Thomas rumor, of course, persisted forever. Uh, but uh, nobody ever knew whether it was true or not. It's a good one. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I mean it paints a nice picture. It, 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 it gives me more respect for him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. a lot more open than we thought he was. Yeah. But he was a very religious guy, and he uh, opened this hospital called St. Jude's. And when he did it, you know, when I was a kid, I knew about it because he right. was the story that he'd started this hospital. And I went, nah, that ain't going to go far. You know, I mean, well, no, all these people in show business, they do stuff like that. And next thing you know, it doesn't exist right. anymore. Well, this thing oh, like has SF not General. only existed, oh it's he, existed for, what, 50, 60 years. You know, SF General, right, hospital? Yeah. You've known this hospital for, you know what it's called now? What's it called? Zuckerberg Hospital. Oh, yes, I heard about that. And he put his name on it. Zuckerberg Chan Hospital. Is that, was that for San Francisco? That was San Francisco General. Yeah. That's you drive where, by that's and, where and my friend Warren Thomas that's, with... that's where Warren Thomas went because he had phlebitis and they gave him yeah. blood transfusions and he got AIDS. Nice. Yeah. Yep. So well, that's what they did there. And... You know, I don't know if he, he died of AIDS. He died of something. They found him in his apartment right. here in New York a couple of days after he had died. But I don't think it was as a result of AIDS. And it wasn't mm -hmm. as a result of any drugs either, you know. Or the 40 billion women he slept with. Huh? What did you say? I said, or the 40 billion women he slept with. Yes. Well, he was he was good at that. The women <laughs> yeah, did yeah, love he... Warren, you know. It was, it was kind of professional. It was like professional comedian, professional slept. That's what was Warren. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, listen, I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. I'm good. I need a vacation. You need a vacation, right. I've been looking at the trains in your direction, so. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we always got a room you can stay in here for a couple of days. Don't stay sure. too long because I need the room. No. But... no, I can't be dealing with, you know. Yeah. That would be just about right for me, I think. Yep. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's talk to you in, in, in a couple of weeks, okay? That's all right, buddy. Uh, sound good to you, ladies and gentlemen. That's Chuck Farnham. Bye, Chuck. See you Bye, later. kitties. Now in its tenth year, this is Gabnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, hello, everybody. I just pushed a couple of buttons wrong. I'm, I'm, I used to do this so wonderfully and so smoothly, and uh, now I don't do that anymore, I guess. You know, but anyway. Hello to all of you. Uh, it is uh, Thursday, and this is the day when nobody calls. Okay? So uh, we do have one caller waiting, and it's a quality caller, but... You know, we just don't get very many callers on Thursdays, and that's why I'm thinking about doing away with Thursdays. So, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know. But anyway, I'm having a little bit of a sore throat tonight. Marjorie's sick, so I'm probably getting whatever she's got. You know, so who knows? Anyway, let's, uh, let's bring some of these people in here. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Um, we're not getting them to. Okay, yeah, there they go. There's uh, there's Alan, and there's Josh, and there's me. Okay, uh, let me just uh, put them all on so I can let you see them. And here we go. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. Doing good. You're doing good. Okay, I'm glad you're doing. Good. Anyway, uh, they're doing good, and uh, Josh is with us again because he's not working tonight. So, did you work during the day, or is this your day off? Uh, this is my day off. I work tomorrow. Yeah. Was yesterday your day off, too? Yeah. Wow. That's good. Hey, here comes... for another couple of weeks, and then I go back to a regular schedule. Ah, good. Tom Yamaguchi. Hello, Tom. How are you? Tom, um, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just wanted to. I wanted. To, all you have to do is respond to me. Otherwise, I don't know whether you I, you can hear us. I just us came on. I just came on. Well, I know, but you were on. Well, I just came on. <laughs> oh. I, I just came on as you were saying. Can you hear us? Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Anyway, mm -hmm. I don't want to argue with you about that. You know. <laughs> I was busy looking at your. Warning the Zoom bomber screen. So, uh, oh, oh, your oh. Zoom bomber screen. Yeah, the you, you, <laughs> yeah, that's really yeah. worked well. No, actually, it's worked pretty well. To tell you the truth, I mean, you know. Plus, they don't try anymore because I don't ever let them on. If I <laughs> if I don't know who the person is, I simply put my face up, and then right. they can do whatever the little bombing they want to do, and it doesn't go out over the over the uh, right. air. Uh, but anyway, so here we are. Uh, you know, I was watching tonight. She's just pathetic all the time. I was watching the Al Smith dinner here in New York. Do you know what the Al Smith dinner is? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a dinner held by the Catholic Archdiocese, and they get all, all these people feel, I guess, pressured to show that even though they are Jewish, they like Catholics. So people like Chuck Schumer show up, and they're sitting next to Donald Trump, you know. And uh, uh, they held it tonight. And uh, the it, what they do is this time of the cycle, and I think they only do the dinner once every four years, okay, uh, they uh, invite the two presidential candidates to come and to do a little, it's like a little roast, you know, and they can tell jokes and things like that. So, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kamala couldn't show up. She couldn't show up and be there, but she made a video for the dinner 
which was very funny. I used one of the SNL people from years ago and um, did comedy very well, I'll have to admit. I, I was amazed. Her, her sense of uh, timing was, was exquisitely good. Uh, and, uh, you know, they did this thing, and uh, she did that. And then she was through, and it was, it was pretty simple. It was like about seven, eight minutes long, maybe. And now it's time for Donald Trump to get up. He must have been up for an agonizing half hour and wandering from one subject to another and didn't know whether he was going to put people down or not put them down. I mean, he had a couple of funny lines, but then he would go off book and he would start going after Kamala and her and how terrible she is and how horrible. And it was just, he was just horrible. I mean, it was just, the man is losing it. Just absolutely losing it. I so, heard Chuck Schumer had a bulletproof vest on. No, having to sit next to Trump. No, no. He, he, you know, I mean, they they were palling it up a bit because he said the first uh, check that was ever written to Chuck Schumer for him to run for office was written by Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, you know, they were a little chummy with each other, or as nice as well. I mean. Let's face it, uh, uh, Chuck Schumer has to be decent to Donald Trump because it's a kind of a dinner where nobody gets hostile with anybody else. But he managed to put a few slams into Schumer. And uh, right below at the very bottom was uh, Bloomberg, Mayor, former Mayor Bloomberg of New York City. And he's sitting there looking like this is the worst thing he's had to do in his entire life. You know, there's not a single exchange of expression on his face. Now, either he's so far gone that he doesn't have expressions anymore, although I've seen him in public and he gives talks to people and he seems to be fine. It's just like I think he was just not happy having to deal with uh, listening to this idiot. Uh, go off book and do the kind of things that are not in the good spirit of the uh, of it. At one point, uh, there were people applauding him a lot, and there there were about oh I don't know maybe twenty five percent of the people there probably were for Trump. And then he said something, and they all booed. You know, and uh, he said, "Well, I guess I'm not that liked by some of the people in this room." You know, no, you're not liked by everybody. Okay, get used to it. I don't know how people find him entertaining. I, I, I don't find him entertaining at all. Well, he would be entertaining if it wasn't a problem. Okay? You know, I mean, um, if, if a man, a person acted this idiotically, uh, we would laugh at him. But he's running for president of the United States. And yeah. that's that's where you part from this, you know. And calling people the enemy with, from within. <laughs> yeah, he calls them the enemy from within. Uh, that's one of his his big things now. I guess you and I are the enemy from within, right? I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I guess we all are. Yeah, but we don't I like Trump, so therefore. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, in the last uh, uh, mo moment, I, you know, I honestly think it's going to go one way or the other. Either Kamala's going to lose or she's just going to rout, okay? She's going to do so well that people don't know why the polls didn't reflect that. But I, <laughs> there's, oh, there's, there's Jeff at his... <laughs> in the last, uh, <laughs> Think it's going to go one way. Oh, boy. You know, I like to come back and show him how to actually mute the browser. He doesn't have to close the browser. All he had to do is mute it like I did. There's a little microphone Why? The icon on the tab that you can just hit, and it just mutes. Yeah, well, that's if you're no, using... Tom, don't confuse him. It's on Safari. It's on Chrome. It might be on Firefox. I don't know. It can show to actually use the browser. He doesn't have to close the browser. He also has to use the microphone. Why? on the tab that you can just. In the top right. There he is. He killed it. He killed it. 
He got it. You got you it, it, Jeff. Jeff, you got it. He muted himself. I don't know why you can't do this before you come on. <laughs> You're okay now, though. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Now you just went bad again. He was just muted. He just had himself muted, is what it was. You got it, Jeff. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> He's got himself muted, so he'll just hear everything we say twice. You know, the easiest thing to closing a browser for me is to go, they're all in the same spot. The top right hand corner, there's an X, and all you got to do is hit the X and it'll close. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just you can go up to. Um, He'll be back. <laughs> what it is Pam, is. Pam is working on it. Yeah, but the thing is that there is on the browser, uh, where along the top where you have your various tabs, okay, yeah. you just go up to the tab. You right click on the tab, okay, and it says unmute site or mute site, mute site or unmute site, and you want to mute the site. So you know, well here comes Tony, he'll he'll save the day. Uh, anyway, I don't really know why Harris, you know, wouldn't go to the Al Smith dinner. I didn't care for that decision, but. Well, yeah. she probably, she was somewhere else, and, and she did Well, they, they decided that a month ago. They said they wouldn't be there. Trump wasn't going to go originally, and then and then must have changed his mind. I didn't think he was supposed to attend, but he must have changed his mind just in the last few days, I, I think. But I read a month ago that she said they were they were not going to do it this year. They were going to skip it. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, not like upset with it. She did it. I'm, I'm upset that it had to evolve into this nonsense, you know? I mean, years ago, that was very much along the lines of the White House Correspondents' Dinner, where everyone went out for the night, and they made fun of each other, and everybody in the room, and everybody had a laugh, and they raised a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a nice evening off from the crap, and then they went back to normal, you know? Yeah. And not that long ago, you know, Trump got his pussy hurt over whatever someone saying something at one of those things and now he either won't go or when he does go he acts like a whiner and cries so I know, yeah, that was the now they've all on. turned into you know half nonsense you know yeah. th that's all I'm saying and that now that's not on Harris I mean that's you know Crap. I'm and, just saying now it's gotten to the point where it's like oh we won't just go we'll, we'll just keep campaigning and I mean it just got his Pussy. He, he's eroded away at the political institutions, right? But he's also eroded away at everything nice that used to go along with him. You right. know, right. things like the White House Correspondents' Dinner that he wouldn't have when he was president because he's a whiny butt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just it's stuff like that. That's all. I don't know why she wouldn't go. They didn't really say. They just said that she wasn't going to attend and... You know, like I, I heard that maybe, I don't know, four or five weeks but ago. But he said he wasn't going to attend either. Yeah, he and, did. I, at that one time, they weren't going to attend. And, and I, then, I hadn't read then, that he then, had changed his mind. Then all of a sudden, he decided to show up. And when he showed up, he said, Kamala didn't show up. Yeah, I guess. I don't know when he decided that. But at the time that I heard that she wasn't going, I heard that he wasn't going. And the reason that I heard was because Jim Gaffigan, the, the host tonight, the comedian... He had said how disappointed he was that, you know, he was going to host the first House Smith dinner with no presidential candidates, you know, because that's what the whole thing's about, you know. Well, she, I mean, she made a tape, you know, she made a... Right, a, right. yeah, I, I, I mean, she, she did do that, so that's she, fine. She made yeah. a video for it. She didn't, she wasn't yeah. stiffing it, but, you know, she's got a campaign to win. And quite right. frankly, I, if you want my opinion, I don't think that the Al Smith dinner is a major stop on the tour. Okay, well, and right. I mean, and, he, and the reason why thing, is right. number one, it's a New York thing, and yeah. she's going to win in New York whether she farts in everybody's faces here or not. You know, I mean, it, she she's just not not going to have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. So, I mean, my my point just for me as yeah. someone who loves to follow politics and has seen these things for years. I just sucks that he's had to ruin something else, 
you know? <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is... Because 10 that, years ago, whatever, yeah. everybody they would go to these things, ha have their laugh, and it was a, a, an entertaining evening. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. And yeah. then he had to... He, so he's ruined that. You know, it's what's next? You got to ruin baseball. Well, if this weren't such a contentious... Uh, 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 what do you call it? The campaign. Yeah. I I, th I don't think either of them would have minded being in the same room together. That's my real point. But but he's made it so contentious. Mm -hmm. You know, he better be glad she didn't show up. You. Yeah. You know, because she, in fact, she did show him up even with this little film they put together. Um, he she was there with a woman from Saturday Night Live, the one who did the stuff with the armpits that I never found very funny. Yeah, uh, who is supposedly a girl? Was that Molly Shannon or no? Huh? Was that Molly Shannon? It's Molly Shannon, it? yeah. I saw me and my sister met her in the village one time. A couple yeah, of months yeah. Ago. But anyway, so they were. She was in this thing with uh, with uh, Kamala, and then you know Kamala did a little bit with her, and then she left, and then Kamala just said how wonderful it was that they hold this dinner every year and did some very nice stuff. So, I mean, why did she have to be there in person? She went out of her way to do something, uh, to be part of that dinner, even though she couldn't be there, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. then his first opportunity, he's like, she didn't think enough of the Catholics here to show up, <laughs> you know? Well, he could reverse that easily and say he didn't show up. To begin, with, to begin with, I want to know how much of this money they raise at this Catholic dinner goes to paying off... Uh, uh, you know, suits and things like that against them by children who've been been molested over the years. You know, uh, it just you know, I mean, uh, it, it 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 just uh, it bothers me that you you know if you don't show up, you're not a good sport. Yeah. You know, and I, I quite frankly, I mean, it's the kind of power the Catholic Church has held in this country for years. But recently, they don't enjoy that kind of popularity or that kind of power. And so why people keep showing up for this dinner? I mean, Bloomberg looked like he didn't even want to be there. Well, you know, yeah, it's it's it loses its luster when it becomes about, you know, being a whiny butt rather than what it used to be. You know, I mean, that's all I'm saying is he's just been so toxic through everything in politics. You know what I mean? Like... I used to sit down once a year and watch the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I still do because we're having it again. But, you know, like the ones that they had, I think, when he was president, he wouldn't go to. And, it, you know, I mean, he just he's just such a whiner. And he had, he had one really funny line, but I can't remember what that line is right now. You know? That must have been good then. Yeah. Yeah, it was good, actually, and I can't remember... <laughs> Remember what I mean, it was. Harris couldn't be there because she went to see Patrick in Wisconsin. So <laughs> trying to get his vote. <laughs> they're they're having dinner tonight. Yeah, actually, she was in Wisconsin today. She was. Yes. Yeah, she had a great line, by the way. You know, I mean, okay, Tr if somebody uh, yells something at a Trump rally to Trump, what does Trump do? <laughs> Throw him out. <laughs> or I'll I want I'll, I want to punch that guy in the face. You remember that one? Yeah. You know, every time somebody does something like this, get him out of here right now. Yeah, get him out. They, of they here. there were a couple of Trump people at Kamala's rally. You know what she said? She said, "You must have come to the wrong rally." <laughs> <laughs> she said, yeah. "I think you wanted to go to the one down the road with less people." <laughs> 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 You know, and turned it into a joke. You know, yeah. uh, something Trump could never bring himself to do. You know, so surprise. Yeah, surprise. Yeah, just, you know, I mean, that's that was just my thinking on it when I looked into it a little bit more tonight. It's just like you know, it just they just take some of the shine off of it because you know it is just turned. It's just evolved into what it what it is. And so, well, did you hear the Al Smith dinner I, tonight? No, I hadn't. I oh. actually totally forgot it was tonight yeah. until I just had it on C-SPAN a second ago, and uh, or the, on the website, not on the channel. And I saw uh, Jim Gaffigan's face in a yeah. thumbnail picture, and I was like, "Oh, that that was tonight," you know. So then I look, and I I 
typed it in to look at something and I saw Trump win. I was like, oh, I, I didn't think he was going to go. But I knew she didn't because I knew she was in Wisconsin today. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, but I'll, I'll sit and watch it. I mean, you can you can go play the video back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or something. Uh, it was uh, he was very boring. Very, very boring. Well, he usually drones on, you know, with his grievances. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, it's. I know <clears throat> you guys don't like to see, you know, the stuff that I send sometimes. Did you look at that Univision? Well, I had I seen it to? already. I had seen it oh, already. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I replied to you. Yeah, I saw. That's what, that's what I'm saying. I replied to you, and I, I had seen not every minute of it, but I had seen a good deal well, of it. The only thing that attracted me to it was the fact that these guys did not hold back. Right. That they they can't, went at him with the hard questions, <laughs> especially the guy that asked about January sixth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he called it a love fest. You guys may have talked about that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, going, Trump. This Trump guy called it is out of his gourd. <laughs> called it a love fest. Yeah. I just yeah, Trump, nothing Trump but love. Had a glass table that he liked to get under. A love fest. <laughs> you were talking about with with the. Uh, Mr. No, you don't. Farm. If you have to explain them, they aren't worth telling. <laughs> well, you should know what it is. You just, it was on your half hour show before this. Oh, were we talking about that on the, I never listen to the interviews after I do them. I'm in another, <laughs> I'm in another room doing stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I don't hear it. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's no, just. I, I saw a lot of those answers that, and Kevin sent that link, you know, and. Uh, we, I looked at it, you know, and I mean, that, that's what I told, you know, I replied to him was like, yeah, I saw, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, you know, and, and then this morning on, I think it was, maybe it was this morning or on MSNBC or whatever. It's like, finally, now that General Milley came out and used the word, now it's like other people are openly bringing themselves to be able to be like, oh yeah, Trump's a fascist. I mean, it's like they were all so <laughs> shit scared of using the word all this time, even though I've called him that for Years. And by the way, you know, who all of would, a sudden, because General Milley broke through, they're all like, "Yeah, he's a, he's a fascist." Who would know <laughs> it better if somebody was a fascist than a military leader? Yeah, than the chairman right? of the staff. Yeah, not yeah. just a military leader, the military leader. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think yeah. he's the kind who would just call somebody a fascist. I, I don't I, yeah. think he is either because I think he's already had more attention in his life for that crap than he ever wanted. And I don't think he wants a minute more of it, you know, but I also think that he felt like it needed to be said. Well, know? he, I think that Millie is also, we will have to say a little bitter over the fact that he was dragged out in the middle of the street. Where they cleared the street, you remember, and he went across yeah, to the he church was with the Bible. Off at that. He made it clear he was pissed off at that. Yeah. yeah, that he didn't like being used like that. That the military was not something you used, and he felt used. I don't mm -hmm. know why he went out there. I think he was just asked, "Come walk with me" or something. You yeah, know? he. I mean, his story is that he didn't know that that's where they were going. It was just that's mm -hmm. what it was. Was a just walk with me thing and before you know it that's where they'd walked you know but and that's where he held the bible upside that. down yeah. yeah yeah right yeah yeah and that one was probably made in america a bit it was that one was made in america yeah the uh, the it turns out the trump bibles are all made in china yeah exactly <laughs> that you allows know. him to sell it at a 500 percent markup probably well no they only cost three dollars and fifty cents a piece to produce leather right. binding and all and they sell them for fifty-five bucks. And hey, what is it? What is it you could buy for uh, for for a thousand dollars or something that he was a selling? Coin. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a coin now. A coin. coin. What? What is with this? I mean, have you what ever had a mean? president you know of that merchandised? I mean, they did it to raise yeah. money for the. Uh, uh, for the uh, uh, cause or for the uh, election yeah. or for the campaign. Signs but I shoot. don't think that's where the money's going. I think it's going <laughs> straight into his pocket. Uh, I mean, it probably is. And if he's running it through one of his businesses, that's legal. You know, I mean, it, it's he's just selling something. That's You know, he's not selling to seal the presidency. He's just selling himself. So, Well, I mean, the only way he's wound up making money lately is by yeah. hawking all these wares. You know, he certainly doesn't have any money left otherwise. 
Uh, no, and I heard the stock of his Twitter company thing that he has or whatever was in the toilet. It's about to, I think it's almost damn near bankrupt, whatever that company he the has. The Truth so. Social. Yeah, yeah, okay. But he may have already sold a lot of his yeah, stock I now. I would have, right. Yeah. Because I, he, he had to hold on to it, I think, until a couple of months ago. Because you can't sell your stock uh, until then. And then he probably sold a lot of it, and that's why it dropped like crazy. Whoever bought that gets exactly what they deserve. They're buying it back, though. <laughs> because yeah, it's, it's a DJT, Trump <laughs> Media and Technology Corporation. It was around <laughs> 7, and then he said, I'm not taking any of my money back. And then today it closed at $30 a share. What is thirty dollars went up? Yeah. No, uh, is it? Oh yeah, that's. Sure is. Said, I'm looking right at it. Oh, DJ or DJ? Not that I own it, but I follow it. Damn yeah. it! That's all yeah. Biden's fault. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. So the yeah. the stock's up to thirty dollars now. Why? Because he it's said he less wasn't less than half of what it originally uh, when it when it. Originally yeah, but started. but it went down lower than that. Oh, yeah, and and so he seven. said he wasn't selling his shares, so then it yeah. went back up. Um, I don't know what they call it, <laughs> ex-dividend day or something like that, where he can get access to his money. Yeah, like he that. said he wasn't going to take any of the money, so people started to buy into it again, and then they found out he took some of the money. See, that's what I figured he was going to wind up doing. And, and well, you know, he needs the yeah, money. He's got you know something? Th bills. Isn't that illegal? <laughs> I don't know. It's his money. I don't see how it's illegal. No, it's well, it depends illegal. Depends on how I'm, he's got it. You know, uh, he's not putting it in his campaign. It's well, no, illegal. but it's on. It's on the stock market. It's on right. the uh, on, on the uh, uh, on the stock exchange. Yeah, there are certain rules around. You he know, had a hold it for and so if many he, months. And if he if he says yeah, but if he oh, says yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm going to sell it, and then the stock goes down. So he says okay, I'm not selling it. The stock goes back up. Isn't that stock manipulation? It's Elon Musk got I mean, a little trouble for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think he's got bigger similar. bigger things to worry about. Mm. Remember we used to have a the SEC big, big, that has to do that. Yeah. yeah. What, what were you gonna say? Sorry. Sorry. Remember we had a vice president who eventually got kicked out? But he was in all kinds of financial stuff. Yeah. Spiro Agnew. No, Spiro Spiro Agnew. Agnew. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't know how much money he was involved in or, or what. Yeah, he was taking bribes. Yeah. Well, he was actually before governor. I think he was like uh, on the school board on Towson. Well, that he stopped being he stopped being vice president, and they appointed uh, Gerald Ford to be vice president. Yeah. And then yeah. Nixon resigned. decided to resign right. from office. And Gerald Ford became president. And he's the, a great trivia question, name one president who never was elected to that office, and that would be Gerald Ford. Yeah, well, who was Donald his Trump vice president? Hmm? And who was his vice president? Aha. Ah. Yeah. Did, uh, I don't uh, think, I, I think Josh knows. Okay, uh, wait a minute. Nelson, I don't think. Nelson I, Rockefeller. Yes, you're right. I Nelson Rockefeller. Yeah, didn't he die in bed with a prostitute or something? I think that, that's a, he was the one. I remember reading that. Had a well, heart attack. that's not the way. That's not the way the obituary wrote. Was, well, you know, that's the way it read. happened. He had a heart that's attack happened, while yeah. with his with his mistress, yeah. and uh, and they he would have lived if if they had actually given him medical care right there, but they. Dragged him back to his office. <laughs> That's got to be funny. I mean, holy shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they dragged That's him back to his day. office so he wouldn't be caught with his his girlfriend. You know what I was going to tell you? It's funny you talk about stock. Who was his wife, by the way, at the time? Hold on a second. Happy, happy, oh, yeah, happy. happy Rockefeller. Happy, happy Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Yeah. My wife is happy. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what were you going to say? You know what Trump does? I, I, I mean, maybe it's just me in my head. When he was in office, what he does is he was talking. He he like he would talk about certain tech companies. He would actually manipulate the stock itself by like, oh, I'm going to go after this. He did things in, in nefarious ways with his words that did drive stocks down for the week. So even though you can't pin it on him, 
he's he, you know he was shrewd in how he words things. Same thing with his tariffs, because if they put these tariffs through, it's going to hurt certain companies. And don't think these big stock companies or well, people don't short these companies to make money. So, so he's not the only one that's ever done this. I don't think it's against the law. No, yeah, but I mean, Bill, no, it Bill is. Gates, it is against Bill the law. Gates it's it's really it's it is against other the law. Presidents didn't do this, though. Am I right, Josh? It's against the law, isn't it? Exactly. What, what do you mean? Well, when when you start saying things and making statements that then make the stocks go up and down. I mean, I don't know a ton on that, but I believe there are some things like that where you can't do it. Espe I mean, especially when you was got in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Once or twice, and I think got fined for saying similar things. Oh, I'm gonna sell some Tesla stock. Or exactly. Something. And then exactly. the next day, it was like, oh no, just kidding. You know, and and I think he got investigated. I think he got a fine. You know, I mean. Well, you see, that's because he God, he, he, he was saying wrong. these things about about uh, stocks that he had money in. Right. And the same thing is true with with Trump. He has money in yeah. Truth yeah. Social. Yeah. If you make sort of you know non-factual statements about it at time i think it can i think it can get you in some yeah. trouble i mean right. you know, I, I don't know if it i mean it'd have to be some sort of serious like fraud to be prison time or whatever but i, I mean i think it can get you in well they would be looking you know, for insider trading right I mean, yeah i mean it, it can lead to things like that i mean it could cost you some money you know fines and things like that i mean Musk had to pay a pretty decent fine, if I remember right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he was, I think it was several billion dollars. I can't okay. remember. Yeah. I thought, it, you know, his mouth ended up costing him, you know, a, a decent amount of money. I mean, I don't remember if it was super high, but. Yeah. It know, was certainly I mean, enough. Yeah. And money. keep in mind, too, that, Josh, we never saw his tax returns. And there's a, that's a big reason why. Because that's everything is hidden with him. I still can't get over how people are voting for this madman. Really, I, I can't wrap my head. Well, hands. also, also, you know, forget about the, just the uh, that his medical records. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, um, uh, what's her name, uh, Kamala, uh, took a medical t took medical tests and everything, so she could show the American public how healthy she is or isn't. And of course, he found something wrong with that. Because she has uh, acute rhinitis. Yeah, and he right. said, you can't have a president with that. He said that? Well, you know what, what that is? is? What is it? It's hay fever. <laughs> it's allergies. I was going to say, he says something about everything. <laughs> I mean, he, he's talking about how bad it is that she has allergies. She's not fit to be president because she has rhinitis. Yeah, like I said, she could sneeze to death at almost any moment. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. One wrong sneeze. And yeah, I mean it's 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 ridiculous. I mean, uh, God, I mean, I just, I just, uh, I just can't believe this man is running for office. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and me and my brother said the same thing. Like, how are we back in with him again? I blame the people, man. Well, I thought I really we were rid of him four years That's what ago. I thought. <laughs> Well, there's some people that we all know that used to come on the show here that still think he's God. Well, I don't know why they think he's God. I mean, come on. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk for a minute about the uh, just the <clears throat> immorality of the man. You know, um, I don't know because they don't have anybody else to vote for. They won't vote for Kamala, so. The staunch Republicans are going to vote for who's ever in there. Well, yeah, I wish there were a third party running. So you know? Well, so those are. people would have somewhere. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of parties running. Well, <laughs> Jill Stein is running again. They never have yeah. a chance. Well, they certainly have a chance to spoil it for the Democrat like Jill Stein did in 2016. <laughs> here's, here's, yeah. Here's a question, AX, Tom, and you guys, even, even you, Alan. Who you saying these people are so staunch with Trump, right, Josh? And Josh will probably agree with this. If Camilla Harris did Kamala. said the election was Kamala. fixed and did Kamala. Kamala, sorry, Kamala. did all the things that he said and acted like, she wouldn't even have a shot. What? Well, nope. I, I don't understand the question. Meaning, like, if she denied, like, if she said the election was fixed, like he said, they would laugh her out of the room. If she pretty <clears> much. Um, everything like he lies about the dogs eating cats. If she did all this rhetoric that he did, oh, I say to me, yeah, yeah, it's like they'd be like, filling all these people, be like, she's crazy. 
Yeah, Fox yeah. News would want They like him because of his ignorance, really, I think. Oh, they, they would uh, they go crazy, but they, she'd never do that. So, you no, know. No, but if I, she did, well, Alex, they would look at her like a crazy woman. Oh, look, she's a crazy woman. Can you imagine? Well, they still Joe say she's Biden, a crazy can woman. Can you imagine Joe Biden dancing on stage yeah, for like this for 35 minutes? <laughs> and what, and what would they say about Joe Biden? He's gotta he's gotta resign immediately, right? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> well, at least Donald knows how to use two of his hands at one time. <laughs> well, I okay. also am tired of him doing this. You know, when he's talking. You well, know. he's talking about <laughs> his sexual organ size. It's more like this. <laughs> no, it's more <laughs> like this. You know, anyway. You but know what's it, funny too, Alex? But, and even you guys, they make it sound like he was like the the greatest president we ever had. I must have missed something. Yeah, I missed something too. I think there's a mass mass amnesia that has gone on in this country that says this guy was a great president. I mean, you can take every measure possible. The economy wasn't better under Donald Trump. Is that what? By the way, is that what Phil says? The economy was better under Trump. Yeah. It, there, it, it, show me where it was better under Trump. Two dollars a gallon this, gas. No, but that's not the the basis of how good an economy is or isn't. And, and the president really doesn't have any control over price of gas, anyhow. Do you know what's happened to our uh, our Dow Jones average? It's yeah, it, it's the it highest it has. It, no, it's it's higher than it's ever been. After that's what I just said. It keeps hitting new highs. I have stock. That and don't we call the stock the stock great. market? The a, econ- barometer? Part, a, a, a barometer of the economy? Absolutely. Remember what Trump said, Alex, uh, in four years, the stock market's going to crash. Didn't happen. No. I mean, I mean it so goes every happen. now and then too. it does a crash. And, then, and a couple of months ago, I, when I first put my yeah, money in, so. it went, it tanked, a, a, yeah. you know, a lot. And I went, oh, my God. And everybody said, mm-hmm. just wait, mm-hmm. just wait. And now here we are about four months later, and it hits, it hits an all-time high. You know. I, thought, I thought the market would have gone a lot lower when COVID hit around the world. Yeah. But it actually didn't drop until a year later. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it, uh, it we're at an all-time high. Come on, Trump. Yeah. How high was it when you were president? Wasn't no. this high? Nope. You know? And uh, and there are all these experts who say that his uh, tariff idea is insane. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. It's it helps great to the, punish the other country. The trouble is who pays for it. It doesn't punish all, all, all of us. Pay for it. They do it. Yeah. It doesn't punish. Yeah. It doesn't punish them at all. To, his solution to everything is to energy. Energy. If you lower the energy that it costs to turn on the lights and start up a machine and everything else. If you lower that, then everything else comes down. But you know what? It's funny, guys. The no. guy couldn't run a casino, like you said, Alex, but all of a sudden he has the answers to everything. Who the hell goes bankrupt that owns a casino? Come on. All of a sudden, great's the, Trump's the great businessman. He's not. Even Mark Cuban is stuck. Well, you see, the thing was, here's what happened. Here, the guy to, um, the, the guy to blame uh, is uh, what was what's his name? Who was the producer of The Apprentice? The Apprentice. Uh, who did that? Yeah, uh, Mark uh, the guy. He also does Shark Tank. Uh, Mark Burnett. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Burnett. Yeah. Yeah. Survivor. Shark yeah. Tank. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to blame him for Trump, because what yeah. he did is he took Trump, who was this absolute loser businessman, put him in a big high back leather chair, in beautiful suits with beautiful lighting. And then he would point his finger and go, you're fired. Thank God. <laughs> and gave America the idea that this guy was a great yeah, businessman. Right. That's well, where they that's get he... their notion of him as a great businessman. They can't well, tell. Let me just finish here and then I'll, I'll, go to you, I'll go to you. They cannot tell the difference between reality and television. Excellent and point. that's the problem. Yes. Uh, uh, no, that's what he was emphasizing in that, in that uh, town hall on Univision that Anybody that came under him just got fired. You know, if they if he didn't like them, they got fired. If I don't like them, they got fired. If they didn't like me, they got fired. <laughs> Tony, I fired Tony, Tony brought up an interesting point. Mark Cuban, a billionaire yeah. that, we, that we all know about, 
He said Trump is the world's worst businessman he has ever seen. And he never backs people out of the company. Like he, Cuban would back other people with with nest money. Trump only backs family businesses or himself. Never anybody Mark, else. Mark Cuban person. only has about five billion dollars, but That's he all, could, yeah. with five billion, buy and sell Donald That's Trump. That's almost as much as the guy that owns Gabnet has. <laughs> and Gabnet bucks. I think he sold them. Gabnet dollars. I shouldn't have said that. The stock's going to go down. The now. stock's going to go down, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, now I just you know I think that it's uh, it's kind of uh, it's, you know sad that America has gotten to the point where it can't tell the difference between real life and television. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know the the idea that a reality show got a pr guy elected president. I mean, it, no other factor did it. No other factor gave people the idea, oh, this guy must know how to handle money. No, I mean, out there, there are people that are far richer than he is, have yeah. made far more money than he has, are as far, far more successful than he is, and none of them are thinking of running for president. I mean, or having a TV show. Or having a TV show. You know what my brother said, Alex? He, he was no. looking at that clip with Bloomberg. Bloomberg must be sitting there. Maybe you called him Little Mike. Bloomberg must be sitting there saying, "I'm this guy's an imbecile, and he's on, and he's going to be at the throne again." What? Is, he must. That's why he's got a shitty grin in his face. Trump. Trump is like the villain that's coming back, the the lord over us. It's crazy. I don't think, in my opinion, there's any way that Trump's going to get elected. I hope you. I right. don't think he I is either. I'm wrong. I think. Okay? I think it looks. It uh, always looks bad right now. Because all the networks are ginning it up. They want to make it, oh, you got to watch on uh, an election night uh, where we'll sell the ads for twice what we t sell, sell them for any other night. And what, leading up to it, we'll tu they're turn you know what they're doing? They're turning this election into a reality show. I'm going to get you. Exactly. Yeah. I hope they don't get slick, though. You know, am I right, Ray? Oh, I agree with you 100%. I think he's, he's going to lose. You think so? I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Well, Roe versus Wade, for one thing. There's going to be so many women coming out and voting against him. Um, the Latino population is, for the most part, is completely against him. Even the Republican Latino population. Why are the Latinos the... against him in particular? Yeah, we're talking about. Did the... you? Oh, but well, I would if I were. Yeah, if I were Latino, I would be mad the just black because the community is going to come. Well, out because again. of the whole immigration thing. Yeah. You know. What was it? The Haitians with the were the ones eating the dogs. He said, "Was that them?" Yeah, well, they were eating yeah. the dogs. <laughs> yeah, they're probably yeah, not enough Haitians. And yeah. Alex, the Jews caught in the election. If you don't win, he hits everybody. Nobody's safe with this guy. He's, He's still disturbed. insisting they're eating dogs. He's still insisting. Really? He just said that yesterday again. He said it. You know what I mean? He just keeps lying. Well, he I'm glad. The funny people. thing is, is JD Vance said he made it up. Yeah. We can't get over this shit. And once you hear it, you may as well continue. Well, amazing. Yeah, it's, it. a, it's amazing what it does to these populations. And, and you know, in certain communities, uh, Haitians are uh, have been, uh, there's been an influx of Haitians into certain communities. Springfield was one of them because they came to the United States seeking <laughs> refuge from the, all the problems that were going on in Haiti. Uh, mm -hmm. And the United States put them up here, and they were paying for them. They gave them immunity, and they were paying cities to take them. Uh, well, and, and Springfield, the mayor of Springfield, said that they needed the, the help for workers in Springfield. That's right, and the, that they've actually been a very nice uh, influx yeah, into, into Springfield. Their lives know, now are being 30... ruined by this rumor that they eat pets, you know. Yeah. Well, that cart. town was only 20,000 people, and 30,000, 32,000 Haitians came in and ruined the whole town, is what he said. <laughs> I, I mean, don't think bad come on. genes. They have Same. bad genes. Well, he, yeah. he disparaged those people and the and the Latino group in that in that town hall yesterday, like no tomorrow. They were sitting there. If you if you saw the crowd shots, they're sitting there going. They were pissed. They were pissed. They're shaking their heads. The one guy, uh, yeah, well, I'm going he didn't answer stuff. the questions. He either. goes no, to he, he goes to a thing of black correspondence, and mm -hmm. then he does that whole deal about well, is she Indian or is she black? I don't know. Yeah. One minute she's Indian, one minute she's black.
<laughs> and they're all going, what is with this guy? He's losing it. I mean, he can't. He he, he will. He's. It, it's almost like he wants to lose. Yeah. Well, he does, so he can. She, bitch. she went to. She went to an all. She got her higher education at an all black university. She's always identified as black. Right. Okay. Her whole life. Well, let me put it this way. I would put. I it, no. She never brought this up to Donald Trump, and she should have put it this way. You said you didn't know whether I was black or not, but. If I tried to rent an apartment 30 years ago that you owned, you wouldn't have rented to me. So what am I? I hate those. Yeah. Can I ask you guys, can I ask you a question then, guys? Even like you, do you think he's saying this, Ray? Because he's almost like saying, I'm a racist and I'm gonna say it to your face because you can't do nothing about it. Well like he, he be, remember well, when he the had... proud boys stand back and stand ready, right like on the speech. Well, it appeals to his base, and he knows yeah. that, so that's why he's doing it. Problem is, is I don't think his base is big enough to win the election. But I, yeah. but Ray, do you think he's an outright racist? Well, you know what they, you, you know what his, I, I think he, he just does whatever. Uh, yeah, I think he's racist at his core. I mean, remember the the, the uh, Central Park Five and yeah, and all he that? put the full page in. And man, the whole out. thing I mean, that was Obama's, Obama's birth certificate, and we can go on yeah, and the, on about yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the fact that he wouldn't rent to blacks 30 years ago. Yeah. And was Those cited by the government and fined by the government for that. Yeah, Those are so, three huge things. Right did there. you raise your hand, Jeff? Yeah. A lot of people who are Republicans who are supporting him are able to say on a daily basis without any issues, well, you know, the reason he wasn't president is because the Democrats uh, destroyed him and and ripped them off and sent people to to yeah. take care of his ability to win. Yeah, well, they, they, some of them believe that too. You know, I, know. I mean, it's the big lie. It's the big and lie. They, they support that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You know, I heard that. I heard the other day that his father. I don't know if this is true or not. But his father was friends with Hitler. No, I don't believe so. I don't no. think so. No. no. Okay, I didn't. I didn't. Fact no. check Where'd you hear that one? Uh, on MSNBC. No. I was just no. gonna say that as a joke. <laughs> oh, that's probably what it was. Yeah. I just heard I the was tail end of it. Joke. So. No, no, I don't think. Uh, I, well, I, he was a crook. That's for sure. In fact, his father. How old was his father when Hitler was in power? Well, he was probably it Fred Trump? was that his dad? Huh? Was his father Fred Trump? I think it was Fred Trump. Trump. Yeah. 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 Well, this is Trump is uh, almost eighty, right? He's seventy-eight or seventy-nine. 78, yeah. yeah. The seventy-nine. His father maybe would have been a uh, twenty or thirty years older than him. So. Yeah. No, I, I, I never heard. To, I, I, you can, I, yeah. You take that back to the 19th. I never oh, heard that about him, but the fact that you, if you don't, if you want to throw something at Trump at the feet of Trump, it's yeah. that he reads all these books about Hitler and uh, pretty much emulates him. You know, oh. it, look at how Hitler he'll came. Be sending, he'll be, if you don't want the Bible, he'll sell you a Mein Kampf. <laughs> well, it's just amazing to me that he's, you know, he is what he is. You yeah. know, and he gets away with it, and the American and and fifth, at least forty nine percent of the American public believes in him, and that's what's so terrible about America that's what's today. Scary, like you said. Yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? Is is Trump worse than McCarthyism? You think? Oh my God! Yeah. It, it's a different. It's a different breed of animal. Okay. Okay, because right. McCarthyism and the whole McCarthy thing and the whole House Un American Activities Subcommittee was basically a witch hunt, if you ever want to talk about a witch hunt. And it, it went and just went after people in Hollywood or in the military or whatever who they accused of being communists and therefore literally robbed them of jobs. You know, they got, it got to a point where they couldn't work anymore because they were considered to be communists. Uh, in the case of Trump, you just got to... You, you have an authoritarian... Who wants he calls to be us the president. enemy within too. You know, now he's like, you don't agree. No, with but him. he wants. You're he's an. Uh, right, am I right, uh, Josh? He's an authoritarian, right? If he's anything, huh? 
Yeah, he's a fascist. I've always thought fascist. he was a fascist. <laughs> well, well, an element of fascism is authoritarianism. Right. Yeah, yeah right. I yeah. mean, you know, when you choose to exercise your political will over those who disagree with you through violence and, you know, the closing off of, you know, any dissenting opinions through a closing off of the political process where you bring them, yeah. you combine those things together, that's fascism. Yep. Yep. And those are the two, two of his main goals. And yeah. isn't, Plus, I mean, he's turning he's, that and like on said, her, too. He's turning that on her, too, and calling her a fascist. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know What uh, the fuck? Where does that come from? Yeah. How do I you mean, call her a fascist? Well, he likes to label he people. Does, because he does. Uh, I've heard him say, you know, these, these radical people on the left are communist and uh, what are they, he's some Marxist and fascist. I heard that yeah. one today. Communist, Marxist, and fascist. You know, like if he could spell all three of those words <laughs> right now, I'll vote for him tonight. If he, you know, like if I could put a piece of paper down, and he could spell all three of those words. Uh, we'll vote. I bet he couldn't He's spell. I bet he couldn't spell fascist. Probably not. I bet Tony can't spell fascist. F A C I S T. No. Did I spell it wrong? You missed the S. F A S C I S T. And I did a Google search for Fred Trump, Alex. He was born nineteen oh. Five died 1999. He died in the same hospital in Queen Mother, Long Island Jewish, mm. of pneumonia. Shit, so he's got good genes, Alex. He lived till 93 years old. Really? Uh, yeah. I googled whether or not he knew Hitler, and they said that that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would imagine it is. Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, you know, so it, it really wasn't the same. Uh, Don Giller's been writing here. Let's see here. Changing the channel. <laughs> Got the Hamas leader. Oh, they got the Hamas leader. We didn't mention that oh, tonight. Yeah. Did they get him for sure, or they think they got him? They, they the got Israel him. Israelis say they got him. They have a yeah, picture okay. of his dead body in the rubble. Okay. So, you know, um, yeah. So there'll be a new Hamas leader. Exactly. And, and in the meantime, while you were looking for this one Hamas leader, you killed almost fifty thousand people. And you know what you're going to get for doing that? You're going to be getting a hundred thousand conversions to Hamas or into into that kind of ideology, because there's every reason to hate Jews. If you're a person who's been living in in Gaza, you know all you want to do is raise your family. You know, and you're a kid just growing up in that, and your parents got killed, and you're living in the rubble. You're going to remember that. That's a scarring that's going to impregnate itself on your brain for the rest of your life. And do you think you're going to like the Jews? And you're not going to like the Jews because you don't like Israel. But Israel is not Jews. There are people, Jews that live in Israel. they are Jews that are, are a part of Israel. But I'm not in Israel. I'm a Jew. And I quite frankly think what happened in Gaza was just... <laughs> It was it was uh, absolute. Uh, it was horrendous, you know. I get um, so confused when I hear Jewish people like on podcasts. I, there's one guy. I don't even know if I should mention his name. I know you know him. Um, he's saying Israel's totally justified in what they're doing. He used to be on KGO, um, and I like this guy, but I can't even believe that he's saying that. It's not justified. It, it, what, it, what's justified is if you take a measured response mm -hmm. to, to go after Hamas, right. but you don't kill right. people who get in the way. And what tens you did, of thousands. Tens of thousands yeah. of people, of kids and old people and whatever. I you know, you, that's, uh, you know, it, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And they ridiculous. destroyed all the infrastructure and the whole Gaza Strip. Yeah. And uh, almost yeah. all the buildings are in rubble. And it's just it's an absolute human disaster. Did, did Israel have a right to go after Hamas? Of course they had the right to go after yeah. Hamas. Yeah. How much of Hamas did they get in combination with all the other people they killed? 50,000 of them that died. And for what? So they could get a handful of people? So they get this one guy? You know? I thought they had these great special forces that could go in and, 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 and surgically pick out the, these I'm people. I'm telling you now, the reason that? why Netanyahu has done what he has done and has prosecuted this war the way he has prosecuted it is because they were getting ready to put him on trial and throw him in jail. 
Right. And the only right. thing that prevented it was this particular action. And he yeah. felt as long as he kept it up, that kept him out of jail. And it's still keeping him out of jail right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, but remind you of anybody you know? Yeah. Who wants yeah. to be president to keep out of jail? Because, you yeah. know, as soon as he loses this election, the next, uh, the 22nd of November is the judge saying, you're guilty, you're going to get two years in prison. Wear the orange jumpsuit, goodbye. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Take him into custody right there in the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, I mean, it's it's it's, uh, but but it's very similar to what's going on with Trump and the reason why he's doing what he's doing, why he's running for president so ferociously. He wants to, to keep jail. out of jail. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but uh, who are you? Who are you saying was uh, was the person that was pro Israel? The radio John person? Rothman. John, I don't even know who John Ross is. Oh, he's is. on KGO. He's been on there for a long time. And now he has his own podcast. I never heard I of him. I listen to KGO all the time. I've never heard of him. I, I, I've never I heard remember. of him. I remember him. Do you remember him? He's really smart. Yeah. Knows a lot. He was he used to, he worked He worked in Washington for a long time. He knows a lot about politics. But for some reason, he's complete hawk for Israel on this. And it really bothers me. Well, you can't be a complete hawk in this situation. You know? Yes. I mean, you got to care about the people who are caught in the middle of all of this, or are, are, are caught in the crossfire, and that's that's the pain of it all. And I feel sorry for those people, and I feel sorry I, for the kids who have to grow up in the middle of it. I do too. We, we haven't heard anything from from uh, Tom Yamaguchi. Tom, <laughs> did you have any thoughts on this at all? On the, oh, I'll tell you, I the whole thing with the Middle East. I I just it's. I don't even know what to. It's it's horrible. I agree with you. I mean, it's it's horrendous what's going on there. I I don't know. I don't know. I I wish there was a two state solution, but I don't know how we're going to get there. It's just really frustrating. Well, certainly yeah. with what Israel is doing now, isn't going to slow. Isn't going oh, to get no. make things get well, any Netanyahu better. Netanyahu doesn't want the solution. Netanyahu no. doesn't want it at all. No. So uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, Wars are messy, hmm? no matter where you're at. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, is not, it, oh that, that's a, that's the big statement of the night. Wars are messy, well, folks. Well, <laughs> but, but you know, civilians unfortunately are are a um, you know get injured and killed in wars. So they don't have to be the uh, the. Uh, I I think Netanyahu's going way out of his way to kill him. Yeah. I agree. Plain with and you. simple, I'm, you know, there, for they, selfish they, reasons. I'm I'm all for Israel protecting themselves. Protect yourselves. You have got an iron dome. Protect yourselves. Right. You know. Yeah. You've got ways to protect yourself. We send you enough equipment to protect yourself, but not to use it against other people who are innocent of anything. Right. When, exactly. Whenever I hear that, oh, Israel has the right to defend themselves. Of course they do, but they don't have the right to commit, like, arguably genocide. That's right, and yeah. to destroy an entire people, you know something. And now they're often, attacking other. It countries. is often said that people who are put upon by somebody often take on the trappings of the person that uh, that went against them because they realize they were effective at it, so they have to be the same way themselves. And I think Netanyahu has become the new Hitler. Okay. Play, uh, you, oh, look, look. Kevin is dancing to the music. Look, <laughs> everybody. Let's let let's do the, uh, yeah, the jerking <laughs> off of the uh, of the elephants, uh, something like that. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Alan, for having joined us tonight. Josh, good seeing you here again. Always good to see you, Tom. You know, you know, I don't have to tell you. You can't call enough. Uh, okay. uh, uh, and of course, uh, there's uh, there's Tony. Thank you. <laughs> thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Kevin. And That's thanks to one. Ray, who showed up tonight as well. I appreciate all of you being here. All of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, folks. Uh, they could can't hang up on me fast enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me just get rid of them. All right. 
And uh, guess who's next? Yes, it's of course, it's Amy Manuel, and she's here with The Intersection. She'll be taking your calls at uh, Gab- on Skype at GabNet Live. That's the phone, the address to uh, call her in at GabNet Live. We'll see you again tomorrow night for the final show of the week. It's our Friday edition, and it's tomorrow night. We'll be here at 1030 Eastern. In the meantime, as always, you know what I tell you. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Good night to you.